Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob Lawrence. I work for the Institute of Urban Policy, University of Texas at Dallas. One thing we discovered in our work, Mr. Mayor, and that's thousands of thousands of Southern Dallas residents have been formerly incarcerated. Another thing we've learned is that high high school dropout rates are prevalent in our community. And last but not least, we have an issue with high unemployment. These factors are all symptoms of the sickness of concentrated poverty. Mr. Bain, job readiness and availability is the cure. <clears throat> With this background in mind, we beseech you to show us commitment on the following three questions. Now this time, I'd like to go through the three questions first, and then let you respond in the end. <laughs> Adopt the policy requiring that any commercial development built in South Dallas with public incentives guarantee a percentage of the associated jobs to South Dallas residents. Require developers and companies with projects in South Dallas to brief community groups on the associated impacts, both positive, anticipated jobs, and negative traffic, pollution. Partner with community groups in negotiating community benefits and agreements to enhance positive impacts and mitigate negative Got that? Got it. Okay, second question. Take the lead in establishing a job readiness program to prepare South Dallas residents for the jobs that will be created from new development, including the Inland Port, fully leveraged federal stimulus funds, for example, Pathways Out of Poverty Grants, designed to create jobs and improve job readiness in distressed communities. Got it? Got it. Last but not least, guarantee a percentage of all jobs related to any upgrades in Fair Park, including the planned midway expansion for South Dallas residents with compliance monitored by the city. Uh, you talked about re-entry programs. Yes. Um, that's critical. Let me tell you what we're trying to do there. Um, we are trying to work with a group called DOORS to develop a comprehensive effort. There have been a lot of different groups in this community, and they all do little pieces of it, but nothing's tied together. Uh, funding is a challenge. Uh, yesterday, we approved a little bit over half a million dollars at City Council that will be the basis of going forward. I will tell you right now, it is not enough money. Um, we are hopeful that Second Chance will come out and there will be funding available there. That's legislation that's passed, but a lot I still don't think that's funded, right? It's not funded. So we're trying to find, to be truthful with you, every kind of different grant and piece that we can. Uh, we've got a gentleman by the name Charles Terrell who's been involved in a lot of years uh, that has taken this on. He, he brings a lot of passion, a lot of heart to this. Um, he is um, it, very much connected to the business community, which is key to try to find jobs and those sorts of things. So we're trying to move forward with the first comprehensive reentry program that we've ever had. Uh, your high school dropouts is absolutely the answer to everything. Uh, I can tell you that um, we will do a lot of things, and we're talking about doing a lot of things here, and we're putting a lot of money and effort into it. Until that dropout rate goes substantially down, we, we are going to be working behind, um, behind the bulldozer, to be truthful with you. Uh, people need to understand, and we need to communicate to every kid out there, that if you drop out, you're probably guaranteeing yourself two things. One is prison, and two is poverty. I hate to be that blunt, but that's the reality of it. Um, the, the challenge that we've got is keeping kids in school come heck or high walk. When they drop out of school, I can tell you that, th that the chances that we can get to them later are going to be very limited. Um, you could say there's auto mechanic jobs and those sorts of things. And I don't know if you've run into an auto mechanic store lately. Um, you are a computer programmer to do those sorts of things. So there's education that, 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 that takes on, on, on those. So we've got to do a better job, all of us. It's not the city. It's all of us 
uh, to try to get that dropout rate down substantially. I think it's almost kind of humorous that we argue is the dropout rate 48% or is it 58%? It doesn't make any difference. The message is still the same. It's way too high. I think on the job readiness, um, we put a lot of money into job readiness. I'd like to put more of it in. There's never enough money. You learn in my job that there's never enough money for everything. We are working with other groups, though. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one that I think is a terrific example, um, and it is in the southern part of our city. It's in the Lancaster area. Uh, it is, we put $800,000 in to go in and demolish a motel that was nothing but drugs and prostitution. Out of that will come a workforce training facility for the urban league. So that's a neat thing that we did. Now, the urban league's going to be putting their own money and their resource in it. The city's putting money into it. We'll probably put some more money into it, too. But the money to be able to get that facility and that opening, we've done. So those are the sorts of things that we've done. I can tell you on the stimulus side, we raised that a moment ago, um, we have got grants in all over the place. We will take and we will be as aggressive to get every single buck as we can. A lot of the money that, that was that reentry program I talked about a moment ago was our funds, um, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funds, which is the stimulus. That's the name for the, the, the stimulus. So we're trying to do all of those pieces to be able to do it and make jobs available. We, we want to get as many jobs, as many people back in, in work as we can. Understand in today's world, we've got to get people our educated. It is just a critical. Everything up to that, and I wish there was magic, magic answers for what we can do, but I'm just, I'm just being straightforward with you. The education is a big answer. The, the, the first one, to be true with you, I think is the most interesting and the more complex. And that was, what you basically asked for is, Requirements when a company comes in and invests in South Dallas. Uh, they commit to guaranteeing jobs, they commit to ongoing briefings, and then there's some agreement. All of it sounds terrific, and I'd love to do it in every case. But let me tell you what the challenge is and what the flip side of the coin is. We go out now today and we work really hard to talk companies into Dallas. And I think we've been generally pretty successful in a difficult environment. Uh, we've had companies that have come into inland port, bottle, uh, water bottling companies and those sorts of things. So we're working hard to do it. Let me take you as an example right now. You're a company, and your only choice of where to put this bottling plant isn't in South Dallas. You could put it in Frisco, you could put it in a number of other places, okay? Right? We're trying to put money on the table, and we've done it, to, to, to be able to encourage you to do it. But here's the problem with what you're asking for, and here's the balance. All of a sudden now, I kind of got him on the line. But then I tell you, you got to sign a legal agreement with me that guarantees that so many jobs will come out of X community. Is any other city making him do that? No. Can I go ahead, which we've done, and gently try to twist his arm and try to get him involved and be with him? Absolutely, and we still do that. But all of a sudden, if he's got a legal agreement, now he's thinking, okay, now I've got a liability. Am I putting another cost attached to me or not? If all of a sudden I get him and we say, you've got to have a meeting and everything, most companies are going to do that. That's not a big deal. We can talk him into in doing that. But again, you give an agreement. He says, well, gosh, what happens if I miss the January meeting? If somebody come back and take my money away or something? So that thing we could do is just how, this, how you structure and how you end up doing it. Um, so those sorts of things. So that's the only thing I want you to know is there's a balance here. We're trying to talk companies to come in and do this. And again, I've seen both sides of it. I've been on the business side and now I'm on the public sector side. And I can tell you what I would like to have on the public sector side, and if I was a business person, I'd say, hey, hold it. I want to work with the community. I think the companies we've got have great hearts. But let me tell you, if we make it so difficult to do work with the city of Dallas, all of a sudden, option number two, option number three, option number four. Now, I know that this isn't necessarily a popular thing to say, but that's the challenge and that's the balance that all of us are into. Okay? So we want to get those things. What we've done for the most part is twisted arms and gotten commitments that people will do it. Um, it stops short of legal agreements and that. Now, in some cases, we've gotten legal agreements and that they have to report the number of jobs created and those sorts of things. And if they don't, they lose money. But the more we stack on top of that, 